Hi, I'm Danny Whitfield. And I'm Rhoda Whitfield. And it's time for another segment of Marriage Marriage Takes Takes Work. Work. And welcome to another segment of Marriage Takes Work. We have a hot topic for discussion today, along with our special guest, Pastor Derek, and First Lady Takiyah McGee of the Bible-Based Church. Now let's get to the show. So here we are again, and, and recognizing that marriage still is a journey that requires us to work every day. And it's on our marital journey that we realize that marriage will not always be great. And so we have some good days and there are going to be some down days. I have our goal is to always be transparent when sharing with other couples that marital issues are universal. That's something that we all go through. So today we want to discuss believing in your unbreakable bond. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at the two words, unbreakable, unbreakable bond. What does that mean to me? And it's to me, it starts with the belief, a truth, a statement of mind that come hell or high water, whatever comes before us, there is something that holds us together. Mm-hmm. that won't separate us. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it, it makes it to be unbreakable. And when we look at uh, the, the, the uh, institution of marriage, it's one that was designed mm-hmm. to be unbreakable. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's my thing about unbreakable. How, how, what do you guys feel about that? Um, I believe unbreakable is um, no matter what happens, no matter what we face, no matter what I go through, I know he's still there. And I know at the end of the day, he's going to always have my back. Yeah. I don't have to worry about if life happens to us, him saying goodbye. I know that we are in this thing together. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and I'll, I'll add, for me, it's, it's the reminder of the foundation you built. Right. Mm-hmm. Kia and I were blessed. We started out as friends and we built our entire relationship and marriage on friendship. So when we first got married, for example, we first bought our house um, after one year being married. And we ended up having to expend finances that we weren't expecting to do in our closing. And our first two weeks of being in our new home, um, we didn't have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And we, we it was a test. Yes, we sir. didn't call family, we didn't call friends. We just looked at each other and said, we're going to get through this together. And there was never a point in those two weeks where we ever felt like the other person was trying to find the door. Because we were friends, we we just, we withstood it together. And I think um, marriage is, when you enter into marriage, my wife was asking me this when we were having, talking about marriage. If I had any advice for young couples, what would I give? And I said three things. I said, I would say, number one, keep God first. Number two, marry your best friend. And number three, plan for the future, but live in the present. Wow. And I stand by that. I stand by wow. that, that. I married my best friend. And so, as she mentioned, when things get real rocky and challenging, um, people see the outside. They want they want your marriage so that to, they, they think. They don't realize what you had to endure. But our friendship is such where um, no matter what, we know we're going we gonna to hang out. We're going to fight through it. We're going to get through it together. And we're going to be able to, to testify about it in the end. Yeah. And, and, and I, I concur with everybody because I can remember the days that, uh, you know, the only thing, maybe I made a pot of soup on Sunday, on mm-hmm. Monday, and, and we had to eat soup and cornbread for the whole week. But, you know, my beliefs was this, a hungry stomach never cared how it got full. It just mm-hmm. wanted something to eat. Good. So that was something that we had to endure together. Mm-hmm. as a team and it wasn't that you know I was from Tallahassee I could have bolted back home mm-hmm. uh, you know to get that kind of security but I took a vow to stand with this man regardless yes yes regardless of the obstacles we had to cross or the the battles we had to fight in order or the meals that we had to miss yeah you know 
had to do what we had to do. And there were times that you only had enough just to feed your child. You did what you had to do and you kept going until things got better. Yeah. So um, uh, unbreakable. You yeah. know, people yeah. really yeah. need to understand what an unbreakable bond is because when you took your vows, you vowed that regardless, yep. you would stay and, and work through whatever situation is confronted the two of you. Yep, absolutely correct. And and that's that that to me is is, is something that's so lacking in, in our present marriages uh, because we don't we don't have that mindset that we're in it to win it. Mm -hmm. We we just we're just in it for the for the time being, for the affection, for the shape, for what you bring to the marriage, but not what what's inside of me and what's inside of you that we're growing together such that whatever happens. It's unbreakable. Yep. And, and Go ahead, Derek. I'm going to say, and a couple of have to remember too is, is with life comes unforeseen circumstances. So I call it life's going to happen, right? The things that you can prepare the best you possibly can for whatever, mm -hmm. and something is going to throw it awry. And you have to be prepared for that. Um, T.D. Jake said this years ago that I really believe, he said, um, your blessing is your children's normal. Mm -hmm. When we think about our marriage, just having celebrated 20 years, we look back on it and my wife always says, man, I, it's hard to realize it's 20 years, but our children have never experienced struggle the way we did when we first got married. When our son was, bo was born, we were, had been married three years and they've always grown up in a two parent household. Something's been in the refrigerator, so on and so on. Those first three years of marriage, that, that really wasn't our truth. We really had to endure a great deal um, we are probably the first generation from our, from our family standpoint that, you know, from home ownership and things of that nature. And so there was a lot of things we had to do first. But when I think about it from our kids' perspective, they'll never appreciate struggle. But to me, that's a great blessing because that means that that we withstood, that we didn't fold up the tent and move um, and, and break apart. And I think that's very, very key. But in some marriages, as soon as things get get yes, uncomfortable somebody's looking to get out the door fast and they, 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 yeah say it again fight or flight yeah and exactly people that today don't want to fight for their marriage their first mm -hmm. thing is to fly is to exit the door yeah. and not work because i can remember um two years into our marriage i had health issues yeah the doctor didn't even know if i was going to have kids yeah. just last year the doctor came in the room and thought i had ovarian cancer so life is going to happen a, yeah. Yeah, but like yeah. you said if you don't have that bond and you don't know like at the end of the day he has my back and i have his back yep yep very true yeah very yeah true. yeah well yeah. you know you know going back to something you said Derek, about you know your kids not knowing what a struggle is um you know actually i didn't know really know what a struggle was when i got married because oh, wow. okay. I came out of, you know, I had a mom and a, and a stepdad and both of them worked. And um, my, my stepfather, when my older sister and I got old enough to drive, he provided both of us with the car. So I, I really didn't know, but I was a, a sacrificing person because when I bought my first car, I had a little part-time job. And so I had to, decide, okay, do I pay my, you know, he kind of prepared me going into a marriage for a struggle before I got married. Um, it was called, you going to pay your car note or you going to go to the mall? Mm. Well, I had to pay my car note. I had to pay my insurance. And after I did that and my little phone bill of a phone in my room, I didn't have no, more, no money left. My aunt had to then give me gas money to put in my car. So, you know, they may not know what a struggle is right now. Right now, correct. That's a good point. But in time, yeah. everybody has to, ex will experience some kind of struggle. Will experience, yeah. correct. They, they're going to eventually, because they're going to, they're not going to be in your house all their life. You, yeah. I know neither one of y'all going to let them live in your house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like, you get a certain age, you need that to pay in your own bill. Yeah. Uh, whether it's for your mansion or your shack, whichever yeah. one you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our daughter's already told me she, when she gets married, she and her spouse are moving back in with her daddy. 
and he gonna take her last name and she gonna he gonna be a stay-at-home father she gonna go to work and i'm like that's not like a great plan that you think is gonna happen right now in 2022 <laughs> our son's like as soon as as soon as the door can let him out he's leaving yeah but you, you know, you're right but you but at the same point you're right they don't know struggle as as i would define it mm -hmm. but you're right at some point they're gonna have to experience life and what it. comes with that right they, they're gonna have to and even right now our kids our son is a penny pincher right if he gets some money he ain't trying to spend nothing um but he'll help you spend yours but he ain't trying to spend his mm -hmm. whereas our daughter as soon as she gets it she's trying to spend it yes. and we, as we know when life is going to happen in that regard when we when we got married i came out of you know i didn't have a lot of money growing up in general and so i've always counted every cent every cent um and and, and to is from tallahassee <laughs> <You're> so <long. laughs> to is from tallahassee right so she's always in my opinion had a, a cushion if things didn't work out and mm -hmm. so when we got married for me it was more mental of if if i can't if i can't live up to my role as a husband she can go somewhere where am i gonna go and i always felt like she was it was one situation away from her leaving and then over this two situation we experienced she made it very clear i ain't calling my mama or anybody else we're gonna trust god and get through this and over time you start realizing and then family will say well, why didn't you tell us and we went for y'all to figure it out because we, we didn't want we didn't want to create an idle dependency either yes. on family members and friends that we wouldn't trust in God through as well. And so we've had to experience some things. Um, but as I said earlier, because we started out as friends and then best friends, we knew at some point it'll get better. It'll be challenging for now. And so our our years later, we thoroughly enjoy people's access all the time. Why you guys always laugh and joke and play around like, listen, I'm married to my best friend. We have fun all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's nothing we've experienced where I feel like, and she mentioned about having health scares. Every time she's gone through something with her health, I won't look in the leave. If anything, you're trying to figure out how do I make sure that, that, that I uphold and encourage and sustain those things. You don't plan for sickness, mm -hmm. right? Those are unforeseen circumstances that you have to, you experience, you got to withstand. But, but um, if your marriage is fickle and phony, when those things happen, you're out of there. But when you are genuinely holding fast to what you believe God has blessed you with and you trying to do it God's way, you got to also believe that God is going to strengthen you and empower you to endure those moments as well. And you're not doing it to appease the people. My wife would tell you, I don't like putting on social media um, our lifestyle because um, I'm not trying to impress the social media crowd. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to give them the impression that everything is great and wonderful in our marriage. And we never have any arguments or things of that nature. No, saying about y'all. That's right. When you see me complimenting my wife, I'm doing the same thing with my wife at home as well. And so those things to me really do matter. Yeah. Um, you know, I was going to say, um, let me get my thoughts, you know, because I forget <laughs> real quick. <laughs> um, I, I think what a lot of couples need to realize is you said something earlier about not going to family members and and asking them and and really and truly you're not supposed to be because that is a part of your test of your marriage okay. and that's a test that you have to go in prayer and and wait on God like Kia said and wait on God to bring y'all through it the situation okay. whatever the financial hardship is not go and beg and borrow from family members because all you're doing there is forming habits that the next time you're short, you're going back yeah. again. So yeah, you right. got to learn how to endure. We never went to, I was right here from Tallahassee and, and you know, but I never went to my parents and said, hey, we don't have money for our utility bill. Hey, we, and listen, I remember the times mm. where we went we, we was barely going from paycheck to paycheck. Mm. We were going, when we first got married, I remember paying, waiting to the end. I, okay, we got paid at the end of the month, right? I ain't paid the bills at the beginning of the month. I had to wait to the end of that month to get a little money from that month to help to pay last month bills. So we oh. weren't even going from paycheck to paycheck. We was going past we was going from paycheck past paycheck to get some money from the next month. And I had to do that every month. But I never asked anybody for a dime. Never. 
-hmm. because this was this was something we had to go through. This was mm -hmm. our financial situation. If we needed to get a part-time job, then we would go out and get a part-time job on top of our full-time job mm -hmm. to make right. us meet. But yeah. we definitely uh, it, we we ate um some home a pot of homemade soup for a whole week. Some some <laughs> at, at, least, <laughs> at least once a month. You know, think He's gonna eat a pot of soup and cornbread. Let me say this to the, to the audience listening, for those who are saying, I would never do that. I'm calling my family. Let me, I think it's important to explain why we're saying this too. Because what you're doing is, it may it may resolve a temporary issue you have in the moment. What you're not realizing is, you're now permitting that loved one to involve themselves in your marriage later Amen. on. Because once they give you money, they feel like they're entitled to now give you their opinion about your marriage Amen. and about how your marriage runs, how your household runs. And that so, money that they gave you one time may be spent and help resolve an issue. They're never going to give you back access to your marriage. And so you got to be mindful of what you are permitting to enter in and exit in. And, and, and it's also just a joy when you look back on it to go through a trial with someone that you love and be reassured that we, we really are in this together. That, that, that's the trial. Your children and grandchildren observe that and they begin to see that that is possible, right? Yeah. For those who've never seen it, it is very possible. But you have to be mindful that loved ones, once you give them access to your marriage, they're not giving that access back. They're going to stay very opinionated about what you do and how you do it. That's, That's right. right. That's right. And, and always holding it before you. Yeah. And I also think that it's better when you build together. I think a lot of times it comes, struggle comes in when couples have, this is my house, this is your house, so we got to figure this out. But because me and Derek didn't have anything, <laughs> and people laugh at me when I say it's like everything we have, we built it together. Very true. There was no I, there was we. We, like you, Miss Whitfield said, if we both hungry, you hungry, we both hungry. Both hungry, yeah. Exactly. If we you don't have no gas, hopefully one of us got gas to get us through be to, the next, to the next pay period. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it's better when you build together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Greater appreciation. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I want to ask a question. Um, what do you think caused couples to lose hope that they cannot sustain their marital bond? I, I, for me, yeah, I, I, I don't think that they really know the true definition of the word Commitment. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't have a clue, and they, they lose hope. Sometimes we may say it, but that commitment is not really there. To say I'm going to stay with you through the storm and the rain, that commitment is 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 contingent upon us always being in a good place that mm -hmm. there aren't any any times where we're going to be short mm -hmm. therefore i can stay committed mm -hmm. but when the rubber meets the road and our backs are against the wall i i may i may just hit that exit and yeah. leave because i'm not truly committed committed to you and to this marriage that i vowed that i would stay in it to the end yeah. yeah. I, I, for me, go ahead. Go, sir. And, and I'm listening to Mr. Whitfield. It's like the song Fair Weather Friend. I don't know. It just popped up in my head. Like, yeah. you got to be there to the end. And I think sometimes couples also lose hope because they start comparing themselves to other couples. We're five years in. We should be here by now. Sally Joe and them over there, they have no stay in your lane. And Pastor D, I'm calling him Pastor D now. Pastor D always tells the couples in couples ministry, no, find your flow. Yeah. Because yeah. what our flow is for our house won't be your flow for your house. Right. And right. I think a lot of times we play the comparison game when it comes to losing hope. I'll and tell you, you I, think, I thought of three. Go, go ahead. Please, go ahead. No, I was getting ready to say, and you can't, you can't do that compare because... You don't know what that couple had to go exactly. through to get there. So, it you is. know, as you want to go down the road that they went down, you got to find your own flow. Yeah. Yeah. Stay in your lane. Your mm -hmm. lane. Yeah. I, I wrote down three things. I think that 
how they lose hope is number one generational, meaning in their in their previous generations, they never saw um their bloodline display going through and coming out. And so mm-hmm. they don't they don't have a they don't have an example or a witness of what it looks like. I think conditional, what you all were saying is is they've conditioned themselves to compare to other people. And in some comparisons, you you are outdoing the other person, and others you're you're like you're failing. And I think this last the last one is spiritual. Um, is is God is out of place in that marriage. Yeah. Right? It, it, it's, you you haven't you haven't built it upon God. You're trying to include God in what you're what you've already built. And in that it's gonna always be problematic. Um, None of us will ever be able to say that in any point of our marriage, we haven't had a le- some level of struggle, some challenge, some loss, some defeat, things of that nature. But but you deal with those things on your job and you don't quit every time. You find a way to go back to the job you can't. So there are people who go to a job they can't stand Monday through Friday. That's that right. They talk about quitting and they never quit because that job is producing something at the end of the week, the month, that they need to help them sustain. And so you're it's in you to withstand if you choose to withstand, right? Mm-hmm. It's it should be we shouldn't be keeping count and keeping score. Um, it can it can look hopeless, especially when you compare. I mean, we've done marital counseling with couples, and we know they're going through trying times. And then weeks later, you'll see them post something on social media about how great their marriage is. And you know it's a lie, but you also know they're trying to impress the outward world. Mm-hmm. And when you begin to do that, the problem with that is that you're now trying to let the outward world become the judge and the jury of, of your marriage and your success. So you're only showing glorious pictures, right? right. You're never being honest about things. Um, we were really blessed because we dealt with, unfortunately, parental divorces and struggles where they were very honest with us about, listen, this is how we mess some things up. And we got a chance to really witness that front row and made some commitments very early on what we were not willing to let our marriage look like, look like and and we experienced some things we had to withstand. And then important. And the last thing, let me say this for those couples too: don't be afraid to admit that your that your marriage needs to go through some therapy, yeah. right? We got to go talk yes, to somebody. <laughs> yes, go talk to somebody, right? Don't don't get to that point. I was always anti therapy until I found myself needing therapy. And so th- sometimes you look at your marriage and say, you know what? I love you. I love you enough to say we got to go see somebody. Yeah, got to go see somebody. And I think I think that's probably. Uh, the biggest struggle uh, for for young couples today is, is they really buck against. And many and many times, it's the male, it's the man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Who struggles because he don't want somebody else to tell him of those inner things mm-hmm. that need to be pulled out of him. To get his marriage to that point that he needs to get to, so he he wants to display this macho uh, uh, image that I don't need this, we don't need this, we can take care of our own problems. But many times, more times than many, the only thing that's going to help you is to you to deal with those things that you learn coming up in your house in your and your uh, different families of origin. Until you deal with those things right there, because it's a monsters. In our past, come on, sir. Come on, sir. <laughs> that we have not uh, uh, formally dealt with, and it's that counselor and it's that therapist who gonna help pull that stuff out. Right. It'll, it'll break it down, but guess what? You'll be a better a better husband or a better wife because of. Right. That's mm. right. That's right. Mm. Well, I'll say this. The wedding vows close by saying, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And so I think that couples need to realize from the onset how unbreakable their bond is supposed to be and to work at it. They also need to look at outside forces called the devil that that only needs a crack. The, and he can come in and cause your bond to break if you allow it. Mm-hmm. If you don't recognize him, you don't know how to recognize him. He can break your bond. Mm, that's good. Yeah. And that's that 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 goes to the the spiritual component of your marriage. Mm-hmm. That you are constantly soaking each other individually and corporately in prayer. Such that when when things come against you, especially the, the tricks of the enemy, 
that you can look through a spiritual eye mm -hmm. and see those things many times before they come. Spiritual to the point where you can recognize it and speak to it and say, we're not going there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're not going to even go there. So, you know, it, it, it's developing our spirituality. That is something that's continuous in us. Yeah, we want to go together as husband and wife. But we, it, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. Mm -hmm. But I can take that mirror and look at myself and say, God, I need you to change this. Or, God, I need, to do, I need you to do this. And, and God will give you that discerning eye to see those things more times than many. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if no one has anything else to say, it is about that time wow. that we come to the close of our day. And um, let you all know how you can get in contact with us. You can contact us at Danny and Rhoda Whitfield or Marriage Takes Work on Facebook. You can email us at Marriage Takes Work uh, 2016 at gmail.com. And while we add it, I, I like to brag on my wife. And I'm, I'm so proud of the work that she's doing. Uh, in 2016, she wrote a grief children's book entitled Where Did You Go? Uh, mm -hmm. During the death of my son. November 22nd, she published Where Did You Go? Supplemental Guide and in, in, in Journal, which can be utilized by children and adults who are experiencing grief. And I had, uh, I, I'm dealing now with, with grief families and, and children. And this book is so needed for families and children who are experiencing grief. And both of these can be purchased on Amazon and other out online outlets. Well, do us a favor and share this broadcast with your friends, married and single. With that being said, we'd like to give a special thanks to Pastor Derek and First Lady Takia McGee for joining us here on Marriage Takes Work and remind you, our listening and viewing audience, to stay the course and be blessed. Thank you for tuning in today. If you wish to contact us, inbox us at Marriage Takes Work on Facebook. And don't forget to join us next week, same time, for another segment of Marriage Takes Work. Remember to love hard and work your marriage.